Hey, it's Hope. Welcome to Hopefully Here. Super excited that you've clicked on this video. We are moving on to the next book in my read a book for every booktuber I follow challenge. And this, I believe, is book 10. So normally I have been drawing names out of a mug, but this is one that I actually have to go back to. It's going to have to go back to the library. It's not renewable. And so I decided to pick this one up just so I am able to read it before it needs to go back. And that is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, as recommended by Books and Lala, who is just one of the best booktubers out there. What's interesting about this is, call me whatever you want, I had no idea that Oscar Wilde was the author of this book. I don't know how that's never computed in my brain before. But I just completed The New Life by Tom Crew, and that has the Oscar Wilde trials are a really big part of that book. So I'm actually really excited to be picking this one up. Also, this is one of the classics that I have heard nothing but, pe but really positive things. It comes up on people's best of lists all the time. I've heard, I think, two or three people talk about it in videos over the last few months just on its own. So I'm really excited to get to this one. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I think it's got something to do with a man and wanting to stay young or something like that. I'm not totally sure, but I'm just, I'm really curious about this one because people rave about it and because there is a connection to a book that I have already done for this challenge, I'm very excited. Also, it's just kind of a different recommendation from Kayla because she does a lot of thriller, horror, mystery. She's uh, done a couple of her romance books, which romance challenges which I always find amusing because she's not a big romance reader normally and I am not either so it's always nice to see somebody diving into a genre that they aren't the most comfortable with because that's how I like to read occasionally just to miss just to oh my gosh <laughs> that's how I like to read occasionally just to mix things up a little bit and so I just her content it always is always just very fun and well thought out she, clearly puts a lot of work into what she does on booktube. I really just admire what she's been able to do through her booktube channel. But let's see how this one plays out for me. I'm very, very curious about it. And you can come along for the ride. Update number one on the picture of Dorian Gray. I actually don't have a lot to say right now. I am 91 pages in. And I feel like we're still just kind of getting to know these characters. You're, there are three men, and now this girl, Sybil, has been thrown into the mix, and her brother, Jim, is that his name? And Sybil and Dorian, I think, are, like, engaged. But I feel like something's going on there that we're not being told the whole story by the narrator. So we'll see how that goes. I am going to reserve judgment. I'm enjoying myself, I'm just, it's not really the book that I thought it was going to be. So we'll see how it all plays out. Anyways, it is 20 to nine, it's Friday. I am so tired. <laughs> Can you hear Bradley again? Upstairs with the drums, obviously. Um, pretty soon he's gonna come down and we are gonna finish the football game from last night. And we're gonna have, it's called, it's Big Bertha Friday. We buy this flavored coffee, decaf flavored coffee. It's like almond toffee crunch or something. And we buy it in a five pound bag. And there's this massive glass container we used to store it in. And we always called it Big Bertha. So now it's Big Bertha Mocha Night, <laughs> which is such a random thing, but we love it. Um, and it was my first week of posting a video every day for this read a reading challenge thing. And as I was doing it, I thought I should have turned it into like vlogmas because of how often it's going up. And I didn't. So it's kind of more a bookmas type thing, but it's not really Christmassy content. It's just that there's a lot of videos going up this year or this month to get it done. So into the weekend and I will update you if and when I have something to say.
probably included a couple of clips, but it snowed today. And I have not lived somewhere where it snows in so long. <laughs> so it was just a really nice thing. We were gonna go out and do some errands and instead we looked out, it was totally white, beautiful. We stayed home. I made myself a peppermint hot chocolate. Bradley had a coffee. We just chilled. We had to build a piece of furniture, which is always an experience, but it's been such a lovely relaxing day. And I have been able to read a little bit. I finally got to the part in the book that I thought the book was about, which is about a man who does something for his beauty. Uh, what is it? Eternal youth. And he's finally kind of figured out that something weird might be going on with this picture. It took a bit of a tragic turn also with one of the characters. I feel like this story is starting to ramp up. I've been enjoying it, but I feel like I'm at the part of the book where it's either gonna make it or break it for me. And I am, what am I, like halfway-ish? And I am excited to see where this goes. So I am going to continue reading, I'm going to enjoy the ambiance, and I'm just gonna have myself a nice chill afternoon. It's been absolutely lovely, and I'm very glad we chose to stay inside rather than go brave the snow and the madness that I'm sure are the malls right now. We, I hate shopping. Like I genuinely hate shopping to the point where I was out of clothes. I mean, completely out of clothes. It was ridiculous. And I had to force myself to go shopping last week and I did it, but it means that I don't want to step in my foot inside another store for months. And because this time of year, obviously the stores get pretty intense. It, there's just nothing that feels good about going shopping, even though we desperately need a couple of things. That's a total, total side tangent. All that to say, I'm glad I got to stay home, watch the snow, read a book, drink a hot chocolate. And there we go. I've got some hockey games on later today that I'd like to watch. And tomorrow is football because Sunday equals football. So it's gonna be a nice chill after, uh, weekend, which is very nice. Probably do some working out either today or tomorrow and we'll see where it goes. But I will update you when I am hopefully done this book because it shouldn't take me all that much longer. I am hoping that, I'm hoping to get into the, kind of the meat, to kind of get into the main part of the book and that it just sucks me in. That's what I'm looking for. I'll let you have thoughts on the picture of Dorian Gray. The ending is not what I expected it to be and I liked that. The last couple of paragraphs, you could kind of figure out where it was going, but how it actually came to a conclusion was for me quite intriguing because I really was unsure how Dorian Gray's story was gonna wrap up and I think it was an appropriate ending. I also kind of had a thought about Basil and Lord Henry and how, you know in cartoons, when a cartoon character has to make a decision, you have like the angel and the devil on their shoulders. That to me is Basil and Henry. Basil being the angel, Lord Henry being the devil. And I leave it to you to read the book to figure out which one has the greater influence. But that seems to be kind of what it was, where the story took, like the path where Dorian Gray would try to remedy his behaviors or he would try to justify his behavior and you would have Basil kind of trying to rein him in and Lord Henry just like letting him fly. <laughs> it was a really interesting dynamic between the three, particularly because at the beginning, Dorian seemed like a little bit of a meek character. And by the end, he has turned into this, he's just, he's evolved, he's transformed into this other completely different personality. And the the picture and the role that the, the portrait by Basil plays is just really fascinating. So it's definitely a really good book. It's another one of those books that there's a, a, probably a lot more going on below the surface than I am getting. And it would be smart of me to maybe do a little bit more research into the more academic side of this book. I don't know that I will because I just enjoyed it at face value, but I can definitely understand why it is a classic and a, as popular as it still is. And there's one sentence near the end that doesn't really have a ton to do with the book, but Lord Henry says, the books that the world calls immoral are books that show the world its own shame. And 
mic drop. <laughs> Anyways, that is my book from Books and Lala, The Picture of Dorian Gray, a classic that again has been on my list and my radar for quite a while to pick up and I am very glad that I was finally able to do so. I don't know that it's going to be a favorite. It certainly hasn't reached the same level as The Handmaid's Tale, but it's probably one that I wouldn't mind having on my bookshelf. We'll see how it goes. Anyways, thank you very much for joining me and I will see you book miss book 10? 11? I'm not sure which one's next, but there's another one coming tomorrow. <laughs>